This week on The Gun Room, we go to a run and gun event in order to beat the shit out of a rifle from a company you've probably never heard of. Will it hold up? Stick around and find out. Over the years, we here at Recall have attended a number of run and gun events. And the reason being that from a product testing perspective, there's really no equal because if something's gonna fail, it's gonna fail on the clock with half a dozen of your best buddies pointing and laughing at you. So with that in mind, in order to compete at the inaugural Proving Grounds event in Barnwell, South Carolina, we decided that building a gun from scratch on our own probably wasn't gonna work because the time frame was too short. And then we were looking around as well for a company that we could go to in order to build a rifle that would fit the bill for the competition. Could have gone with anybody, but in the end decided to go with a local company because I like supporting local, small, veteran-owned businesses, with the caveat that the product has to be good. You know, there's no way that I'm gonna support a company that says, hey, buy our shit because we're veteran-owned, bro. Looking at you, Black Rifle Coffee. Stuff has to perform. So I went to the guys at Cox Arms and said, hey, get me a rifle. And they went, yeah, no worries, we can do that, mate. And this is what they came up with. And I've been really impressed with it. We shot it over the course of the weekend, and this is the only rifle to have hit all the long-range targets. out to 375 yards. Now, 375 yards might not sound like a whole lot of distance, but it is when you're trying to breathe through your asshole. Two, one, go. Okay, let's take a look at the rifle and see what went into it. Because it's also a valid discussion to see what you could use in order to build your own rifle if you wanted to come and do an event like this. First of all, it has to be lightweight. Because if you're dragging it up 10-story buildings on a regular basis, then you know ounces make pounds, and pounds make an awful lot of pain. It also has to be reliable after being drugged through the mud, after, like this one has. It has to be reasonably accurate. What do I mean by accuracy? Well, it has to be practically accurate, which means that if, say, you're shooting a four minute of angle rifle, typical for AKs with open sights, then at 400 yards on an 18-inch target, then you only have really a one-inch strip on either side of the target as wiggle room. If you're shooting a one MOA rifle, then it's a lot more forgiving in terms of where the reticle is on the target when you press the trigger. So this, fortunately for me, came out to be a superbly accurate gun. With Black Hill's 69 grain OTM ammunition, I was getting three quarters of an MOA out of it consistently. That being said, a lot of it had to do with the quality of the glass that's on this rifle right now. And before I dive off into the weeds, we might as well talk about that. So Primary Arms has just released a 1 to 8 by 24 in their PLX line and normally my work guns all have Night Force NSX's on them, again 1 to 8. This has all the same specs as the NSX, however it's about 500 bucks cheaper and that's a lot. Glass is superb, has the ACSS reticle in it and I was able to determine target range out to 400 yards just by using the reticle. Great piece of glass, you should check it out. Uh, this is not an endorsement by any stretch of the imagination, but it worked for me this weekend. Because this rifle has to fly from state to state, I didn't want the hassle of being it, it being an SBR. The reason being that you have to file a mother may I notice with the F ATF every time you do that, or every year that you do that, and I really didn't want the hassle. I don't, I don't recall anybody really having been prosecuted for not doing that, and I can't remember anybody who actually has done the mother may I notice, but it's one of the things that you could get jammed up for. So rather than do that, it's, this is a 16 inch barreled rifle, or at least it's a 16 inch overall length barreled rifle. This is actually a 13.7 with a pinned and welded forward control designs flash hider up front. And this flash hider allows me to mount a suppressor should I need to. Because it's uh, suppressor capable, it does have an adjustable gas block. The profile on the barrel is pretty lightweight in order to keep those ounces off. The handguard covering the barrel is about 13 inches long and gives me plenty of real estate in order to mount lights and lasers for use with nods. The handguard, the upper receiver and lower receiver all machined out of billet on the company's machines in-house by Cox Arms USA and I've been to their shop and I've seen the amount of care that they take with the construction of this gun. And honestly, having seen shops all over the world, they're right up there with top tier guys. For example, there's absolutely no slot between the upper and lower receiver. You do have to exert some quite a bit of force in order to get the pins out in order to clean it, but that's probably gonna loosen up over time. I'd rather have it too tight to start off with than too sloppy and then it get even sloppier over time. Trigger is set at around about three and a quarter pounds. It's an Elfman single stage trigger, which allows you to really, really hammer. 
and the rest of the gun checks all the boxes for stuff that I look for in my own personal guns. For example, everything is staked correctly, the carrier is nitrided to resist corrosion, uh, the bolt has been lapped in to the barrel extension, and overall the thing just runs like a rape tape. I can bullshit about this gun all day. The real question is, how did it perform when the rubber meets the road? I might have had a pistol malfunction, but I'll take it. <laughs>